Hello and welcome all to our ECN 160 final project, which is going to be a 4-bit microprocessor. Our group consists of Chris Remijard, Nathan Whitman, and Tyson Graham. Tyson Graham speaking here. I am going to talk about what this microprocessor does in this demonstration and what it can do and be programmed to do by the operator should he choose to do something else. First, it's going to display Hello BG which stands for Hello Brother Gordon, our course instructor. It will also display a couple mathematic operations displayed below, such as 4 plus 3, 4 minus 3, and 3 times 3. It has the capability to do other mathematical operations of addition, subtraction, and multiplication. And it can also display any text that is found on the ASCII table. Here is our microprocessor in all its glory. It's pretty big there, so we're going to try and break it down and find out what everything does. Here is our 8-bit counter. This is going to count from 0 to 7, and it can store these 8 numbers. Uh, each square there that you can see from the left side will, either, will store an increment. Uh, you can count uh, from any of those numbers, you know, uh, and you can count in different ways. Uh, you can count up by three or, or whatever, but in this case it's just going to be from zero to eight or zero to seven. Uh, our register file here is basically the storage device for this unit. It is not the storage of instructions, rather the storage of data. Here we have the upper register. On the upper right side it says reg4. That will contain the upper number for the operation and the lower register will contain the other number of the operation. So if we go back here, we can see 4 minus 3, for instance. So the upper register will have the 4, and the lower will have the 3. Now we have something called a MUX, or a multiplexer. This is going to tell the register files basically what number they're going to hold. So I can say in the MUX, okay, so I want first register top register to have a 4, and the second register to have a 3. Mux is what decides that, basically. Uh, we have the ALU, or in other words, uh, here our calculator, our math calculator for this uh, microprocessor. It has the ability to do multiplication, addition, and subtraction. It has the ability to do multiplication because, obviously, multiplication is a string of, addic of additions. Uh, to the right, if you see, there are a couple XOR gates on the left side there. To the left of the, to the right of the XOR gates is the ALU that's in charge of addition. And on the left of those XOR gates and the OR gates is, XOR gates, is uh, basically what we added on to it to make it subtract for this demonstration. Now, here is where it all happens. This is called the program decoder or the PROM. The programmable ROM, which will store all of the instructions that we want uh, to make things happen. For example, if we want an H displayed, we're going to have to program here first, I want an H, uh, or an E, or any math equation that we were uh, uh, saying we could do. Now, it will have to pass through its translator, which is the instruction decoder. This is kind of the mediator between the program decoder and the MUX and the ALU, and uh, it kind of tells, okay, I want to do this. For instance, I want to uh, output an H. Okay, so you're going to have to talk through this guy to talk with the other component to make that happen. Now, here's the LCD controller, which is basically the paint job of this, of this car, if you will. Uh, this is in charge of the appearance of the text and all of the ASCII characters that we tell the PROM uh, that we want to display, whether it be an H, an L, an O, a B, a G, or a 3, or an equals. Whatever's on the ASCII table, we want that to display using this. Now, what does this debounce do? This guy is something we kind of didn't know about in previous labs, and we kind of manually did it, gate level, but this was in Xilinx the whole time. And what this does is this will tell the operators, hey, between transitions, don't do anything, because I am not stable yet. So it's going to wait until a transition is complete, or setup time is complete, before operators do anything to avoid any glitches. So that's basically our uh, 
microprocessor, and we're going to demonstrate it in a minute. Thanks for listening, guys, and see you soon. Hi, Chris here. We're here I'm here to demonstrate the text on our board. Now, this is the code that's in our prom, and as we cycle through the clock increment on here using this button, we're going to display Hello BG for Hello Brother Gordon. Now. Good. Hi, uh, my name is Nathan Littman. I'm the third member of the group, and uh, I'm going to be talking about the code that we use first to uh, do the addition, subtraction, and multiplication part of uh, our program. And um, the first thing, if we start with, we have upper and return, which will, after the hello BG, it will allow us to basic carriage return down to the next line. So we have that, and then we're going to go into 3 plus 4, which will be printing 3 plus 4. And then it'll equals and actually send it the three and the four to the ALU, which will add the two. Okay, so the next step we're going to do is three times three, which will be uh, basically adding three um, twice um, and adding it to the result from the ALU. So I'll start with the clock. So there's a three times three, and then it will do that cycle to the nine, and then. Um, it is output the 9. So the next step, what we did was um, 4 minus 3. The initial one is going to be um, pro programmed in as a 2's complement and then uh, as, as a negative 3 and, my, and plus the 4. So we're going to do that. We're going to print the 4 minus 3 first and then the 2's complement added together. So basically it's a 4 uh, plus negative 3 will give us the 1. The second one, we're going to repeat the same thing, except this time we're going to have gate logic, which does it. So it's going to be a 4 minus 3, a true 4 minus 3, where the gate logic will end up making the number, um, uh, will end up making the number uh, inverted. So, um, so here we go. So it'll be the same thing, but like I said, this, this second print was a gate logic level. Um, the last thing I'm going to show you is how to reset. We have a reset button right here. By pushing this, it'll reset the counter. And then it, now, next time I go through, it'll start by clearing.